It's up guys, it's Dark Arm Dulst, and today we're doing a Sword Soul deck profile. So I'm really excited to do some for you guys because this deck is an amazing deck to be able to play to summon out all sorts of awesome synchro monsters to help you go in for game. So without further ado, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell there so you can come part of the notification squad, and definitely check out the Patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards. Like getting your name, description, every single video, getting assigned cards in the mail, and even getting to request a deck profile every single month to your Patreon. So without further ado, let's get straight on into this. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Moyi. Moyi is the best normal summon in the entire deck. So this card is the ability, if it's normal or special summon, you're going to build a Sword Soul card or a Worm Monster in your hand to special summon out a Sword Soul token. It's a Worm Tuner, Water, Level 4, 0 Attack, and 0 Defense, which is an awesome effect to instantly get a Tuner token on our side of the field so we can go in for our Synchro plays. But while you control that token, you cannot special summon the extra deck except for Synchro Monster. Monsters. Also, if this card is sent to the graveyard as a synchro material, you get to draw a card, which is an amazing effect to summon this card out to your side of the field, summon out the token, and then go in for a copy of Grandmaster that will also get you a search, and your copy of Moe will get you a draw, which is just absolutely insane. We then play three copies of Long Yoon. Long Yoon is definitely a three of the build as well because this card helps you go in for your level 10 synchro plays because you can discard one of their Sword Soul card or a, one of your other Worm Monsters to special summon this card of your hand and a Sword Soul token to your side of the field. Also, if this card is sent to the graveyard as a synchro material, you get to inflict 1200 points of damage to your opponent, which is a great effect to help you close out games. We then play two copies of Taiye. Taiye is great in the deck as a 2 but you only need two copies of this card because it does require a little bit of setup for your copy of Taiye. So it has the ability that you can banish one of their Sword Soul card or a Worm Monster from the graveyard to special summon out a Sword Soul token to your side of the field. Also, if this card is sent to the graveyard as a Synchro Material, you can send a Sword Soul card or a Worm Monster from your deck to the grave, which is a great effect to help you send your copies of your Tenny Monsters to the graveyard off this card's effect. We then play three copies of Incredible Ecclesia. Incredible Ecclesia is incredible in this deck and definitely a three of because this card can turn into any of your Sword Soul monsters. Because this card is the effect that if your opponent controls more monsters than you do, you can special summon this card from your hand. Also, during the main phase, quick effect, you can tribute this card and then special summon a Sword Soul monster from your hand or deck, which is a great effect to instantly bring out the exact card you need, like a copy of Moyi or Taiye. We then play three copies of Ashina. Ashina is definitely a three of in this deck. This card actually helps you summon out your other worm monsters to your side of the field. And all of your tiny monsters actually share a common effect that if you control no effect monsters, you can special summon this card from the hand. But this card is super unique because if you control a face up non effect monster, you can actually banish this card from your hand or graveyard to special summon a tiny monster from your deck, except another copy of this card. Also, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except except for Worm Monsters, which is the only downside of this card is that it locks you into Worm Monsters for the rest of the term. We then play three copies of Adahara. Adahara is great because it helps us recover our banished worm monsters. Because this card has a really cool ability if you control a face up non effect monster, you can banish this card from your hand or your graveyard and then target one of your banished worm monsters, except this card, and add it back to your hand. We then play two copies of Vashuda. Vashuda is definitely a two of the deck. This card helps you balance cards off the field, which will only play two copies in this build. We can play a single copy of Shathana. Shathana is great in this deck as a one-up. Just to be able to play as an additional tiny monster. As this card is the effect that if a face-up non-effect monster you control is destroy a battle by card effect, manage this card from your hand or your graveyard and then target one of those destroyed monsters and special summon it, then destroy a monster that your opponent controls, which is a really cool effect to be able to use in this deck. I love this card in the build and it just helps out so much in this deck to have an additional name that we can special summon to your side of the field, especially as a level level 4 monster that works with our copy of Monk. I did actually consider changing this card out for a copy of Mapura, so you can change it out for the Fire Tenny if you want to, to be able to use their copy of Protoss. Speaking of Protoss, we also play a single copy of Protoss. Protoss is broken in this deck. It's searchable, and it's so cool to be able to make. Is this card is really like, can it be normal summoner set? It must first be special summoned from your hand by banishing three monsters with different attributes from your graveyard 
and or face or reveal. It cannot be destroyed by card effects and you can declare one monster card attribute on the field and destroy all monsters on the field with that attribute. Also, until the end of the next turn, neither player can special monsters with the same attribute, which is absolutely crazy, which is why I actually consider playing Mapura over Shathana, but in playtesting, I really like the Shathana instead, but you can change that from Mapura if you're playing up against a lot of Snake Eyes matchups or a lot of Fire matchups. But it's really good to be able to play in this build because your copy of Protos is just absolutely insane. We then play three copies of Ash Blossom. Ash Blossom is definitely a three out of the deck to basically just stop your opponent from touching the deck. We can also play three copies of Effect Failure. Effect Failure is really good in this build to just stop your opponent's monster effects. So that's it for the monsters, guys. Let's get into the spells. So for the spells, we're going to start with a single copy of Call by the Grave. Call by the Grave is definitely a one of in the build to basically just stop your opponent from hand trapping you while you're going in for all of your plays. We play a single copy of Sword Soul Sacred Summit. Sword Soul Sacred Summit is basically a monster reborn for your Sword Soul monsters, which is why I play this card as a one of in the build. We then play two copies of Heavenly Dragon Circle. Heavenly Dragon Circle is really good at helping you tag your basically your monsters in and out because it lets you tribute a worm monster and then add a worm monster from your deck to your hand. Or if you tribute it a non effect monster to activate this card effect, you can actually special summon it instead, which is such a cool ability, but you negate its effects. This card is really good as a two of in the build. It helps you dodge hand traps, and it's just absolutely amazing in this deck. We then play three copies of Sword Soul Emergence. Sword Soul Emergence is basically the rota for the deck, letting you add any Sword Soul monster you want from your deck to your hand, or if you control a Synchro monster, you can add a Worm monster instead, which is a crazy power effect to be able to use their copy of Protoss, because Protoss is actually a Worm monster, so you can search it off of this card, which is insane that you can actually search it off Emergence. We then also play three copies of Pot of Desires. Pot of Desires is really good in this deck as a three of, because this card can actually be the last card you activate in your hand. Just banishing 10 cards from the top of your deck and then drawing two cards is really powerful in this build, especially with your copy of your Supreme Sovereign in the extract that will actually make your opponent's monsters go down and your monsters go up, depending on the amount of cards banished. So this card is really powerful in this build and getting the cards banished actually works in our advantage. So. That's it for the spells, guys. Let's get in to the traps. So for the traps, we're going to start with a single copy of Blackout. Blackout is basically Icarus attack, letting us target a worm monster you control and two cards your opponent controls and destroy them. Also, this card is banished. It lets you special summon out a Sword Soul token to your side of the field, which is a great effect to help us get an additional token out of our side of the field to go for more synchro plays. We can also play three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Infinite Impermanence is definitely a three of the build just to stop your opponent's monster effects and also lock down entire columns of spells and traps. So, that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get in to the extract. So for the extra deck, guys, we're going to start off with Grandmaster. Grandmaster is an amazing card, and probably the first card you're going to be summoning out of your extra deck is this card is super easy to summon off the effect of Mogi, which is amazing. This card is really, if this card is Synchro Summon, you can add to your hand or banish a Sword Soul card from your deck. And also, this card is basically a walking effect veiler, because quick effect, you can banish a Sword Soul card or a Worm Monster from your hand or grave, and then target one of their effect monster on the field and negate its effects until the end of the turn. Term, which is a pretty cool effect. We play a single copy of the Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign. Sword Soul Supreme Sovereign is amazing in this deck as one of because for each banished card, this card gains 100 attack and defense points, and monsters your opponent control lose 100 attack and defense points, making this card work really well with your copy of Pot of Desires. This card also has the effect that if this card would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish a card from your grave instead, and if a card becomes banished, you can actually banish a card from each your opponent's field and graveyard, which is such a powerful ability. We then play a single copy of 
of Sinister Sovereign. Sinister Sovereign is really good in the deck because this card does burn damage like crazy. Is that this card, if another monster is Singer Summon, that's a worm monster, while this card's on the field, you can draw a card, and if your opponent special summons a monster, you can banish one of those monsters and if you inflict 1200 points of damage to your opponent. Also, when your opponent activates a spell or trap card effect, quick effect, you can banish one of those cards, and if you do, inflict 1200 points of damage to your opponent, which you can get all those effects in one turn, but they're all once per turn. Meaning, if you go into, the car, into this card using a copy of Long Yum, it's going to do 1200 points of burn damage off of Long Yum. Then, if you resolve both of those burn damage effects, you're going to do 3600 points of damage before you even attack, which is absolutely crazy. And I actually really like to end on this card because it does so much burn damage and just banishes cards off the field. You then buy a single copy of Ice Jade Graham Agrini. Graham Agrini is really good in the deck because it does require a water tuner monster, and all of our tokens are actually water tuner monsters. So this card is really good to be able to make because it just helps you deal with cards on the field. Plus, it's very difficult for your opponent to deal with this card because it can bring itself back to your side of the field. So this card is actually really cool. Plus, it's actually lore accurate to be able to play Graham Agrini in Sword Soul. This is really cool to actually be able to make this card in the deck, and it's just an amazing card overall. You then buy a single copy of Chow Fang. Chalfang is a great option in the deck to be able to make on your side of the field. It basically just deals with light monsters, which is really cool. One copy of Draco Berserker. Draco Berserker is amazing in this deck as one of because it just helps you banish cards off the field and can swing it multiple times to help you go in for game. One copy of Dragite. Dragite is amazing in this deck as a one of because this card is a walking spell and trap negate. We then play two copies of Baxia. Baxia is great to help you balance multiple cards off the field. And it's just really good in the deck overall as a two of because it's just a really good card to be able to bounce cards off the field. Well, my single copy of Yazi. Yazi is really cool in the deck as one because it cannot or cannot be targeted by your opponent's card effects, and also it is a really cool effect to help you pop cards on the field. We then play a single copy of Shaman. Shaman is really good in the deck as a one of because this card is so good in this deck. It lets you discard a card and then target a worm monster in your graveyard and special summon it, helping you bring back your monsters to your side of the field. We then play three copies of Monk of the Tenyi. Monk is great to be able to work with our Tenyi cards because you basically just link them away to get you a non effect monster on your side of the field. Because anytime they say non effect monster, we're usually referring to Monk in this deck. So, that's it for the deck, guys. I would enjoy it. This deck is super fun to be able to play. If you guys have never played a Sword Soul deck before, you should definitely give this deck a try because it's an extremely powerful deck. It's super fun to be able to play. I've been playing this deck ever since it was released, and it's just so cool to see this deck evolve and just really fun to be able to play. So, that's good for this one, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and there's so you can come notification squad, and we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.